Welcome to the Jesuit Institute. Friends, our ministry at the Jesuit Institute is only made possible through your generosity. When you participate in events, when you buy from our shop and make donations, you are enabling us to continue. Like so many people and works, COVID has had a financial effect on the life and the ministry of the Jesuit Institute. Our resources are limited. And this means that our ministry too is limited. First, we want to thank those who have continued to support us for your support and your generosity. We cannot do what we do without you. You have assisted us in negotiating the challenging financial time that we have been through. We are also asking that you consider, if you have not, making a regular donation to our ministry. We have a varied ministry. We offer the weekly online mass, but we also try to reach out to people who do not have resources to offer training, retreats, and other ministries. By 2027, we want to reach as many people as possible, helping them to pray, to engage in critical conversations, play an active role in our society, and really make a difference. We can only do this with your help and support. You minister with us when you assist us financially, and there are a number of different ways you can give. The QR codes for these ways, credit card or EFT, will appear on your screen now and can be found too on the homepage of the Jesuit Institute website. If you would like to give and cannot at this time, perhaps you may be able to help in a different way or you may be able to assist in the future please feel free to contact us on the email address that appears on your screen if you wish to help. Thank you for being partners with us in ministry. When you help us, we can reach out to and help others. I am truly grateful. Thank you and God bless. Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate Ash Wednesday. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome as we come together to mark the beginning of the sacred season of Lent on this Ash Wednesday. Wherever you are, you are very welcome. Let's pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting, this campaign of Christian service so that, as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and tear your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in mercy, and repents of evil. Who knows whether he will not return and repent and leave a blessing behind him? a cereal offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, 
sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, even nursing infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare your people, O Lord, and make not your heritage a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your merciful love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash me completely from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Have, have mercy, mercy, O Lord, Lord for, for we have, have sinned. sinned. My transgressions, truly I know them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned. What is evil in your sight, I have done. Have, have mercy, mercy O Lord, Lord, for we, we have, have sinned. sinned. Create a pure heart for me, O God. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have, have sinned. sinned. Restore in me the joy of your salvation. Sustain in me a willing spirit. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Have, have mercy, mercy, O Lord, for we, for we have, sinned. have sinned. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us. We beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Working together with him, then, we entreat you not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At the acceptable time I have listened to you and helped you on the day of salvation. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Today, harden not your hearts, but listen to the voice of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give alms, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have had their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have had their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites. For they disfigure their faces, that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have had their reward. 
But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Perhaps I'm giving my age away a little bit, but when I was growing up, the word discipline had quite a negative connotation because it either meant that you're going to be hauled in front of the headmaster for something, or you would be grounded, or if you were lucky enough, the belt would come off and you would get what was referred to as a hiding. I know these days we don't do things like that, but it did happen to some of us. And so a certain fear kind of arose every time we heard the word discipline. Something you knew was not as it should have been. And in one way or another, there was going to be trouble. And I was looking at the word discipline the other day, and I came across its etymology, or as we say, the origin of the word. And its root is surely not the connotation that I have with the word. Because the root of the word discipline is knowing or instruction or disciple. Maybe they thought by beating us they would help us to know or to be good disciples or whatever. And then the word Lent has its etymology, its origin, in the word springtime. And so, a springtime for discipleship, a springtime for instruction, a springtime for knowledge, when we bring these two words together. The prophet Joel and Jesus, whom we heard today in the scriptures, both explain how we might use the springtime to grow in knowledge, to be instructed, and therefore by the end of Lent to become more faithful disciples of Jesus. Because isn't that ultimately the purpose of the sacred season? That we want, as best we can, to journey with Jesus to his cross and his resurrection so that we too can live our lives with the same fidelity and commitment as he lived himself. We want to be like the Lord. That is the aim of Christian life, to become like Jesus himself in all dimensions of our lives. I want to suggest to you on this Ash Wednesday that there are two invitations from the scripture. The first one from that prophet Joel. Return to me, Joel says, with all your heart. And then he goes about telling the people how that will happen. That they should journey back to God because they have gone wayward. And so maybe that's the first simple invitation for us as we begin this time of Lent. To ask ourselves two questions. Which direction am I moving in? Am I moving towards the Lord or am I moving away from the Lord? And we need to look at all the dimensions of our lives, in our relationships, in our work life, in our leisure. Do we do things that help us to move towards the Lord or are we moving further and further away from the Lord? And then the invitation is simple. Return to me with all your heart. Not with part of your heart, but with all your heart. The second invitation comes from that gospel. Jesus invites us in the gospel to focus on three things. He talks about almsgiving. He talks about prayer and fasting. And notice the order in which Jesus presents those three disciplines, almsgiving and prayer 
and fasting. Maybe sometimes we think prayer and fasting is more important than reaching out to others in almsgiving. I wonder if the Lord is saying something to us simply in the order in which he offers these disciplines. And so maybe this Lent we are called to go back to those disciplines. We're invited to see how those disciplines work in our own lives. Maybe we don't like these disciplines, and yet this time of Lent is inviting us to try them again, not for ourselves, but so that we can grow in the Lord. Almsgiving, that practice of giving, traditionally defined perhaps as giving food or money to the poor, but it's really about developing an awareness that we have things that other people don't have. The gifts that we have versus the lack or the poverty of others. But of course, our awareness is simply not enough. That's only the first step. We are then invited to do something with that awareness. And our willingness to be generous, to give from our surplus, is what the Lord is asking of us. Because our generosity should mirror God's generosity to us. Surely, in our own context, in this country, it is not hard to practice this discipline of giving to others who lack. There are many people who are poor and who need from our surplus what we can give them. The second is prayer, the practice, so to speak, of intimacy with God, the central way that God uses to change us. As William Blake so eloquently writes, our task in life is to bear God's beams of love. And we can only bear those beams of love when we know that beam of love in our own lives. In prayer, we begin to know and think God's thoughts. We desire what God desires, love what God loves, and will what God wills. God meets us where we are and moves us to deeper things. And so prayer is not simply just about talking to God about what we need. That's kind of what we do at the beginning. But as we grow and mature, our talking to God becomes listening to God. And listening to God is what changes us. It what, it's what gives us the mind of God. That somehow we tune in to the Lord. Somehow our hearts begin to beat with the same heartbeat of God. And so we are in tune with what God wants. And then we are invited to fasting, the practice of, abstain of abstaining from food. But notice, this fasting is a specific fasting. It's fasting for spiritual purposes. It's distinct from health, which is for physical and not spiritual purposes. Indeed, we all want to fast to get thin. But this kind of fasting is because we want to focus on God. And fasting slowly begins to reveal to us what controls us. Because so often we cover up what is going on inside of us with food and other good external things. Maybe even we pretend that they are not there. Fasting allows what is in us to begin to surface. Fasting reveals something to us about ourselves. It reminds us too that we are really only sustained by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Fasting helps us to keep balance, that the non-essentials don't take precedence in our lives. It frees us. It opens us. And so in this time of Lent, we're invited into a space of fasting and perhaps a broad space 
of fasting. Maybe we have to fast from people to find some solitude. Maybe we have to fast from media to slowly empty our minds. Or maybe one of today's biggest addictions, we are called to fast from social media so that we free ourselves during this time of Lent to be with God. Maybe we need to fast from our consumer culture. Maybe we simply need to fast from the amount that we take in each day. How will you return to the Lord this Lent? What will you do so that this springtime can truly deepen your discipleship? We solemnly mark the beginning of this time of Lent by marking ourselves with ashes, ashes that were brought from the palms of last year's Palm Sunday celebration. And so wherever you are, I'm going to invite you now to simply, as I pray, stretch out your own hands over the ashes before you. We will pray that the Lord bless these ashes, and then sign yourself if you are alone or with others in a room, sign one another with the ash that we have blessed, marking the solemn beginning of the season of Lent. And so, dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly ask God our Father that He be pleased to bless with abundance these ashes which we will put on our heads as sign of our penitence. O God, who are moved by acts of humility and respond with forgiveness to works of penance, lend your merciful ear to our prayers, and in your kindness pour out the grace of your blessing upon these ashes and your servants who will receive them, so that as they follow Lenten observances, they may be worthy to come with minds made pure to celebrate the Paschal mystery of your Son. We ask this. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Repent and believe the good news. Repent and believe the good news. I'm going to invite you now to take a moment. We're going to be silent. And perhaps right at the beginning of this Lent, ask the Lord for the grace that you need? What are you going to commit yourself to in these days of Lent? Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. 
Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice with your hands for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all our Holy Church. As we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that through works of penance and charity we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleansed from our sins, may become worthy to celebrate the passion of your Son, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure, so that, more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity, and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. For you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more giving thanks, he gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Buti, our Bishop, and all the clergy and all who minister to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray together now as the Lord himself taught us. Our oh, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we pray. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received sustain us, O Lord, that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you and be for us a healing remedy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Pour out your spirit of compunction, O God, on those who bow before your majesty. And by your mercy, may they merit the rewards you promise to those who do penance. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.